What are some of the clues that you can notice um, if spirits are influencing you uh, adversely? Well, it's very, very hard for a person to notice these things about themselves. So that's the problem, is because they're in a certain emotion, they're already in this emotion, and so it's very, very hard for them to now observe a spirit or feel that a spirit is influencing them because they're so much in the emotion themselves. Well, say someone else. But if someone else is noticing, well, firstly, let's look at the anger-based issue. Um, how many of you have felt like a, just a switch in you, where all of a sudden you're sort of working through things and fears and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden this, this sort of rage overtakes you, and then straight away you're off on another tangent totally altogether. How many of you have noticed that happening? Because there'll be quite a few. At that moment, a spirit is influencing you. Spirits cause us to actually have big changes, big equilibrium changes. Right? By connecting, and, and remember that it's the law of attraction at work. There's an emotion in me that allows that to be attracted, and then them to act in this way through me. I must have that emotion in me for it to begin. So that this is the thing to remember. It's all under your control, but not here. It's under your soul control your emotional control. But, the instant you notice big swinging changes in you, make sure that those changes have occurred from your own soul and observe what's going on. Does it feel real to you? Some of you will notice that there are times when your own emotion doesn't feel like it's even your own emotion. How many of you have noticed that doing this? Quite a number two. Well, it's highly likely that it's not your own emotion at that particular time. It's highly likely there's a spirit connecting to you through an attraction, and it's the spirit's emotion being reflected through you. Now, the same principle applies. They have to have had an attraction to you in the beginning for that to occur. So there has to be something in you that attracts that coming to you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's yours. But if you are in a state where you're not judging anything at all, where you don't judge your negative emotions, you know, this is what we often do, isn't it? The positive emotions are fine, like, how many of you enjoy, like, when you're happy, that's great, yeah? yeah. You all enjoy being happy, yeah? Nobody not enjoy being happy. <laughs> how, many, how many of you, you know, have the feelings too, you know, after sex, you know, that nice sexual glow feeling? That you enjoy that? Only two people. <laughs> all these beautiful emotions in there that we do experience. But the problem is that we start becoming addicted to them and judge, we judge them as good. And then all of these other emotions like, how many of you like being angry? Really like it, like you really enjoy it, you think it's fun. Not many people have. It's a terrible feeling inside of you, isn't it, when you're angry? This stuff just boils through you and it, your whole body feels in a, in a huge state of mess and conundrum. And, and it's just a terrible state to be in. But when we get into that state, we still need to not judge it. Right? As soon as you judge it, you're just adding another layer on top of it. And that's the problem, is that we see all of those emotions that are unpleasant to experience, and then we make that extra step of judgment, and then we make that extra step of denial, which is where we go into this phase here. Now, in terms of spirits, as soon as, remember that Whenever there's spirit influence, it's because we're here. It's because we're already there in that denial place. Recognising it firstly is about firstly seeing ourselves truthfully. Am I wanting really with all my heart to experience all of my emotions or do I really want to find an easier way to deal with my emotions? You need to be honest about that with yourself. Now, earlier I asked, do you want to find an easier way to deal with your emotions? And only a few people put their hand up. How many would put their hand up now? Because <laughs> Can you see, though, that as soon as you want to deal with your emotions in a different way, you're already making a decision about your current, the current way that it's happening. You're already in a state where you're denying some emotion. 
Can you see that? Yeah. Just by making that, having that feeling of wanting to do it in an easier way, you're already in a state of denying an emotion. That straight away sets up denial of emotion. Always go back to the child. What does the child do? Right. So if it's sad, what does it do? Just sits down on the floor and cries. And it cries for maybe 10 minutes, maybe half an hour. Then what does it do? Gets up and acts like... <laughs> because it's completely dealt with that emotion. If it's allowed to, it does. That's what we need to do. Exactly that. And anything outside of that, any you know, a child doesn't say, oh, what technique can I use now? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that's happy technique. <laughs> so you don't, see, you don't see a child naturally do just... <laughs> Yeah, like, don't you? Right, and I'm not making fun of you who are you doing that. What I'm saying is, get back to what the child's doing. So the child does that, just does just just lets the emotion flow. Alright. But the child doesn't go, oh it's my liver based emotions. <laughs> or the finger on the left hand. Like it doesn't do that, does it? <laughs> so the child doesn't do that, does it? So we need to get back to how the child processes. In the end, you will be like a child processing, but you'll be an adult in the way that you can handle the emotion. When I say be an adult the way you handle it, you are completely responsible for the emotion that you're feeling. A child isn't always like that, is it? A child sometimes wants to make you responsible <laughs> for the emotion that it's feeling. And often you are. And often you are. <laughs> Very true. Very true. <laughs> So, so the key thing for us to realise is that every time we get into denial, we're just opening ourselves up. And, and there are times when you'll feel a switch within yourself. And my suggestion to you at that moment is to just stop and pause and just ask yourself, all right, does this feel like there's some spirits with me right now? And if there is, what's my law of attraction? Why am I in this state? Ah, it's because I want to run away from this emotion. It's because I want to blame... You know, there's somebody, I want to blame Peter for how he made me angry the other day. I don't want to feel that it was mine. You know, I want to blame mum and dad for, you know, how they treated me like a child. You know, when I was a child, I want to blame them and I want them, them to feel my emotion. Or whatever it is that we're feeling. Understand that as soon as we get into that state, we're in a state of denial. As soon as we're in a state of denial, we are now in a state of easily being controlled. You can't be controlled unless you are in a state of denial about an emotion. When you're at one with God, you will be so open to all emotion that it's impossible to control you with any of them. 